No, I don't waste no time How you doing guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel my name is joshua daniel george a social media marketing online coach and in this video i want to discuss the only way to scale to multiple six figures with your social media marketing agency now before we begin i just want to say the methods and tactics etc that i'm going to teach in this video are not necessarily applicable for those that are just starting out okay so if you are a beginner feel free to watch this of course feel free to take notes but don't you know take everything with a pinch of salt is basically what i'm trying to say okay because long story short you can actually bootstrap your way to six figures and the very first time i actually hit my first eight to ten k month was by doing the exact same thing as what i just said you know just figuring it out kind of thing okay and it does largely come down to mindset you know eight thousand a month sounds like a lot of money right especially when you're starting out um and when you sort of overcome that oh that is a lot of money i will never be able to achieve that you'll notice that it is easier to achieve it and i understand how airy fairy that sounds just bear with me you know like if you are earning a full-time income eight thousand a lot eight thousand a month is going to sound like a lot but if you ask a multi-millionaire you know what would happen if you were only on AK this month or you're only into AK this month he'll probably stress out right because everything the way he set up his business is conditioned for him to make a lot more money than that okay so the difference between how he reacts how the millionaire reacts as opposed to someone that is just on a normal full-time income is largely mindset and of course you know again the systems the back end etc I understand but the mindset of how he reacts to that money okay and another thing that i thought was really interesting when starting out was um what i read i think it was the um either the 10x rule by grant cardone or the sell or be sold by grant cardone one of the two um i'm not a very large fan of grant cardone i don't really you know resonate with his methods etc he's very sales minded very um, american you know and um, as a person i'm not like that um his methods are obviously you know very effective and i know a lot of closers that really look up to grant um, and i'm no way bashing on grant at all it's just when i approach business i've just got a different approach that's all i'm trying to say but anyway i do i do still read his books i still you know look to uh, see how he's uh, how his mindset works etc and in one of his books um, the more I think about it the more I think it is sell or be sold by Grant Cardone he says if you spread out all of the money that is available in the world equally every single person on earth will be a millionaire that is how much money there is in the world and that really got me thinking like okay wow so you know uh, there is a lot of money out there why should i accept or be okay with just 2k a month or 3k a month etc you know depending on whatever the average full-time income is in where you know where it is that you are from so that mindset shift really did help me you know going forward and really make me understand that okay it's not strange that I'm actually going after more money it's not strange that i'm signing more clients etc okay so i just want to put that out there i know that for those of you that are you know in this space for long you you understand what i'm trying to say um, and for those that don't really understand it might sound a bit airy free but like i said please bear with me for this video because i do want to try and share some tips tricks tactics strategies things that i've done etc um to get up to that multi six figure mark okay so the first thing i want to touch upon um this will be in no particular order this will be just one big brain dump basically this video i will try and structure it as much as possible but um the first thing that has really really changed for me is the communication with my clients so back when i started out uh, this is back in 2017 that's when i sort of uh, really got started with SMA. I think 2016 was when I started to dabble into it. The start of 2017 is when I basically you know, pitched my first online course to try and figure out, okay, what is social media marketing? What uh, I keep seeing on the internet, etc. And um, basically back then, I leveraged freelancer websites a lot, peoplepower.com, freelancer.com, 
big talk com and what i basically used to do is i used to rely solely on what they would tell me would be their method of communication one of my clients was back then it was a social media management client which was a service back then that i still offered where i would post on the client's socials he wanted a uh, weekly call about the engagement and growth of his posts etc on twitter and on instagram so weekly calls on a monday for this client we had another client that wanted uh, social media management as well, Instagram growth, which was basically just me following and unfollowing on his account. Um, he wanted Skype. For him, Skype was the, you know, the method of communication. We had a couple of clients on email, a couple of clients on WhatsApp, and um, a few of my clients actually had my personal number and they could basically ring me whenever they wanted. And basically, yes, you know, it's the client is happy because they can pick the method of outreach, but going forward, that communication is not streamlined. And it will get to a point, because again, if you've got one client, by all means, you know, um, send a, you know, send physical mail if you want. But when you've got multiple clients, it's going to be hard because there is going to there are going to be days where multiple clients will want updates, will want changes, will want new campaigns, etc., and will want to know what's going on. And if all of the methods of communication are spread out, shit is going to hit the fan, okay? So you will met, you'll notice that, okay, client one will send you a Facebook message, client two will send you an email, client three will send you a text because he sent a Slack message and you haven't replied to that, client four will send you a message on Skype. And there is no perfect method of, I can't even speak, communication, okay? There is no perfect software, there is no perfect method. There are, of course, a lot of you will prefer Slack. We've actually moved away from Slack um, I, I'm seeing more and more people using Facebook Workplace now as well. I see a lot of people using um, Skype. You know, there is no perfect method of communication. You need to decide what that method of communication is for your agency and you need to stick to it. Why? Because only then, once you streamline the communication, can you actually work you know, more efficiently on the business, okay? So just a bit of transparency for us, the way we do it is of course, you know, we show our clients on the onboarding how to look at the ads so they will don't so they don't ask us basically you know, what's going on. Can you give us an update? Because they can see it in the ads manager. Then we've set up data boxes so that they can see the metrics in report form, lifetime, and we send them weekly loom updates. So every week we say, okay, this is what happened the previous week. These are the next steps for the next week. Then once a month, we will get on a strategy call with our clients, explain the high level overview, where we wanna to get to, where we wanna go, how much budget we need for there, if we can increase the budget and so on and so forth, okay? Then for the day-to-day, -day, um, we use email. And the reason why we use email because the day-to-day -day isn't actually as much as you'd think. The day-to-day, -day, because we structured everything so efficiently, the day-to-day -day emails are literally just, hey guys, good job, hey, just watch the loom, um, could you repeat that? Or hey, just to confirm, um, you know, you wanted more images for this, or hey, just to confirm the budget um, that you proposed is fine, etc. okay? So it's just very, very small things that, you know, throughout the week, they'll send us emails about, but other than that, the loom updates, send, send them the actual updates and the next steps. The strategy calls are for the high level overview. And then the email, like I said, is just for the day to day. And then they've got the data boxes and of course the information in the ad account that they can use if they just want a quick update or to see how a campaign is getting on. Okay, so number one, streamline the communication. And like I said, it's in no particular order, but just my number one tip is to streamline the communication. Then the second most important thing and something that I was reluctant to do in the past. I have, if you go back through my older videos, you know, you'll know you basically see me say the exact opposite of what I'm saying now. And the reason for that is because I was in a different situation with the agency, okay? So what I'm talking about is picking a niche. When starting out, I think picking a niche is not that important. When you join my program, you know, whether that is a um, program to get started with your agency or program to you know, scale your agency, I will say to you to pick a niche. And the reason for that is because you need to get started somewhere, right? There needs to be a starting point for you to start this journey. And if you don't know what that starting point is, or if you don't pick a starting point, then you'll never get started. So I always say, start with a niche, but you are not necessarily married to that niche. 
So you can always play the field. You can always dabble into e-commerce first and then dabble into um, car dealerships and then dabble into real estate and then basically take on different clients from different niches, take on clients that aren't really right fit, take on clients that are far too small for you, take on clients that are far too big for you, etc. Build up that experience because over time, experience, you know, you will learn so much from those mistakes and failures as you will from doing everything right the first time around, okay? So if you, let's say, for example, you're just starting out and you've gotten a client that is a supplement company in Australia, um, and then, you know, you get in contact with a real estate company in the US, don't turn that client away because it doesn't fit your, your client persona or your client's avatar when you are starting out, okay? When you get to the six-figure points and you want to scale further, that is when you start turning away these clients because you've got a vision in mind, you need to streamline as much as possible, simplify everything in order to get to that next level, okay? So bootstrap your way to six figures once you've hit the six figure mark or once you've won your 10K a month, that is when you really start focusing on the one niche and the streamline and etc. okay? So my advice to you when you're starting out, play the field, start somewhere so do decide okay this week i'm going to look into e-commerce etc obviously give it a go don't just give up after two days if you don't get a response to your emails etc but you're not married to one niche okay and then once you actually want to go from 10k to 20k 20k to 30k yes that is when you need to start niching down because it will work in your favor if you've got all clients sort of in the same direction and the reason for that is what i like to call client cloning so for those of you that are in my inner programs you guys know that i am focused on a very very specific niche within e-commerce and the great thing about that is that what works for client one will work for client two as well so the way this niche is structured is that it's local but it is e-commerce and usually the, the larger clients that we work with, this is not the case, but for most medium to large size clients that we've got, they will work within a certain area, a certain county, a certain state or a certain province, depending on what country or place or continent you know, these clients are from. And the way that works is, okay, if it works in one province, the campaigns that we set up, it will work for another client that is active in another province as well. Obviously, you change up slightly in terms of the imagery, in terms of the brand, and in terms of the content, but the overall structure stays the same, okay? What works for a client in Australia will work for a similar client in America, if that makes sense. So client cloning, and that is how you streamline a lot of what is going on within the agency. So let's say we only focus on jewelry e-com clients, you know, for example, we don't, but for example, then if you've got a jewelry client in New Zealand and you notice that carousel ads for top of funnel are the best performing type of ads that you can set up with short form copy and then you know the third image being a testimonial, I, I'm just speaking out loud here, then chances are that exact strategy for the top of funnel will work on the same type of clients in America or in the Netherlands, etc. Okay, so that is how you work with the client clone. And, you, and the great thing about it now, within our niche, if we were to take on a new client, we can hit the ground running right away because we know what works. We know how to type up the copy. We know what headlines to use. We know what type of placements is the most profitable and so on and so forth. Again, of course, we will do a lot of testing. We do treat every client differently, but the overall structure, we know what works on average and what doesn't. And client cloning is a very, very easy way of um, you know scaling your agency in a streamlined way. One of our other um, one of our core students, he focuses on funnel building, and he can literally because because he's so dedicated to building the highest converting funnels. Once he gets on another client that is operating in this in a similar niche or industry, he's basically already got the framework for the highest converting funnel. All he needs to do is change over the imagery, change over the branding, change over the you know the pain points, etc., and he's good to go. That will take him half an hour to an hour tops to set up a high convert funnel that could generate his clients upwards of you know seven figures because the 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 structure the blueprint is already set up and the same goes you know for our clients as well we know what works we know what doesn't and rather than having to research the industry research the niche research what works and what doesn't we already know so onboarding a new client is much much quicker it's much more streamlined and we hit the ground running right away. 
okay? So my third point here is a client clone. Point number one was communication, point number two was picking a niche, and point number three, which ties into point number two, is client cloning. So within the niche, find similar, uh, you know, find the one service that you can offer to similar clients, okay? Then I'm just gonna quickly just have a little look at my uh, notes that I've taken, and the next thing I wanna talk about is increasing the lifetime value of a client. Now, again, quick anecdote to when I started out, we very quickly um, hit six figures when we sort of figured out you know, what to do. Uh, the method of outreach that we used back then was Upwork and within 14 days, we signed 14 relatively small clients, averaging a retainer of 600 a month for social media management and social media growth. And what I mean by growth is generating more page likes, generating more followers, etc. That was our service. We hit AK um, in monthly recurring revenue by doing that. And what we noticed is that yes, this was great and we signed a lot of clients, but after two months, these clients would leave because they realized that an increase in followers doesn't necessarily mean an increase in revenue. You know, they noticed that, okay, posting on socials, yes, you know, well, you'll get more engagement, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, like I said, you'll get more sales. So our offer, was basically not in line with their aspirations and what they wanted to achieve. So our sort of like niche times offer equals results hypothesis was wrong. But anyway, we lost a lot of clients on the back end. So our lifetime value of a client back then was maybe two, three months tops. And then when we dabbled or when I uh, transitioned into e-commerce, same thing again. We had offered this like 90 day accelerator program because that was like the thing back then, right? Like that was, um, obviously, you know, I'm talking about like two years ago, um, I wouldn't recommend doing it now, but back then that was like, that was the thing, right? Like, okay, stick for 90 days and after 90 days, you know, you'll see what, what results we get. And then, you know, it's like a month on month commitment from there. Um, and what we noticed is yes, the client would stay for the 90 days, realize, okay, after 90 days, this is not what we wanted. This is not what we expected. We were promised the world. We didn't get the world. Um, so therefore we are leaving. So what you need to do is you need to try and increase that lifetime value. How do you do that? By getting clients consistent results, by getting clients better results, by basically promising the clients what you can achieve. So rather than saying, oh yeah, we can do this, 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 and this for you, and then apologies there, guys, the uh, camera actually died. But anyway, like I said, so rather than promising, you know, this, this, and this to the clients, and then you know only delivering on the one thing, actually match up the client's expectations with your service delivery. You know, everyone can promise them, um, you know, like 10X row assets, 20X row assets, um, seven figure returns. But if you can't deliver on that, then yes, of course, they are going to leave you on the back end, okay? So how do you actually increase the lifetime value of a client? It is as simple as getting the client's better results, okay? And how do you get better results? By actually having a quality service. So the way I structured this, because I learned this the hard way as well, right? Like when I um, was starting out, I used to outsource the media buying, outsource the Facebook ads, because I was in this mindset of, okay, I'm not allowed to work on the, in the business. I need to be working on the business. I need to be working on this high level overview, which is true to a certain extent. However, by outsourcing it for as cheap as possible, I was not getting the client's good results. So I restructured my entire agency to now work in the back end of my agency where everything else is streamlined. I still focus on the high level overview, but I do the media buying myself. I get the client's better results. I have drastically improved the lifetime value of our clients. I have you know, basically been able to increase our retainers and our delivery service because of the results that we are getting. And the great thing about it is as well, is if a client wants to speak to me directly about you know the advertisements or about the metrics, et cetera, I know the answer to every single question. I am like four or five steps ahead of the client because I know the business manager inside out. I know the ads manager inside out and they trust me with all of this information as well. So when I say to a client, okay, this is the next step, this is how we're going to do it, this is what we can achieve, then the client knows, okay, I can take his word for it because he knows what he's doing. Same goes for the opposite side of the spectrum. If I'm given an ad account, because what we, the way we structure things, again, you know, feel free to check out my sales videos if you want more information about this. But with the way we structure our calls is in two steps. The first call we jump on, uh, we get analyst access to the ad account. And on the second call, we explain to them what we can do, what they can expect from us and how much we charge for it. If 
in the first call, after we've got an uh, analyst access, we realize, okay, there is nothing we can do for this client. We will get on that second call and say, listen, it's not your ads, you know, your whole business is broken. And the reason for that is this, 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 and this. And what we've noticed is even though we haven't taken that, those clients on, they've referred other people onto us because of how transparent and, you know, basically how um, straightforward we were with them. So despite us not even setting up a single campaign, these clients referred other people onto us because of how good we were, because they could see right away, okay, He's not taking on us as a, as a business because the ads just won't work because it's a much deeper lying issue. And to be able to see that, to see right through it, because this particular example actually worked with five other agencies before coming up to us. And every single agency said, oh yeah, we can do it. We can turn it around. We can do this. Give us 90 days and we'll do all of this. And I took a look at, again, I know I'm sort of tooting my own horn here. Um, you know, I looked at the ad accounts, seen right away, this is not going to work. The ads are fine. It's, you know, there's something wrong with the website and this is something that we can't fix in the short term. You know, by admitting that to the clients, not necessarily to turn them down business, literally just because it's, you know, from a, an analytical point of view, it's not going to be feasible. By doing that, we actually gained this client's trust and that client referred us on to other business. So in the end, we did actually gain the money that we set out to achieve when you're getting on that initial call with that client, if that makes sense. Okay, so long story short, increase the lifetime value of a client by getting the client's better results, by performing, you know, getting better performing campaigns. Either do that yourself or find an adequate media buyer that can do that for you. But be careful when you sign media buyers that you understand what is going on. Because the mistake that I made is I just signed media buyers based on their price, the cheaper the, the cheaper the better basically, and they'll send me reports saying, oh yeah, we generated five page likes this week. And I'll be like, okay, cool, good stuff, we're, we're doing a good job. Because I had no idea what was going on in the ads manager. And it wasn't until I realized for myself what was going on that I, re you know, I realized how bad these media buyers actually were and that I could do a much better job myself. And it's gotten to a point now where, yes, we are still actively looking for media buyers for the agency, but there's not a lot out there that are that can do a better job than I can. So, you know, to, it's, it's almost, I am sort of like now stuck in the back end, right? But that's where I prefer to be. Uh, you know, the sales calls are outsourced. Um, you know, the outreach is outsourced with Facebook ads, the communication, the fulfillment, everything is basically sorted. And then I, you know, basically just run the ads. And that is all I do. That is literally my, my only role in the entire agency is just to set up the campaigns. And I love it. So anyway, just to wrap up this video here, um, as I mentioned, the communication needs to be on point. Your niche needs to be decided if you want to get to the next level with your agency, not when starting out. You need to make sure that you can clone your clients or clone your service for the clients. And then, like I said, you need to increase the lifetime value of your clients by getting them better results. And then to wrap up everything, you need to have a predictable way of signing clients. And the most predictable way of signing clients, in my opinion, is Facebook ads. Of course, what I also recommend you guys do is ask for referrals every single time you get a good, um, you know, you perform well for your clients. But setting up ads for your agency will basically remove that whole process of sending out the cold emails, sending out the DMs, etc. You know, doing all of that outreach, because let's face it, you know, especially when you're starting out, outreach is like 80 to 90% of the time that this agency takes up, right? You're focused so heavily on the outreach that none of the other processes are basically being done. And that is, again, the same mistake that I made. I only focused on outreach. I didn't focus on actual service. Um, what we do now is we actually run ads for the outreach. So we've just got ads running in the background 24 seven. And despite the fact that we are not doing any outreach ourselves, we still get calls booked. Our pipeline is still full. We still hop on discovery calls every single day. Okay, so it's not like once a week. It's literally every single day we've got calls booked because we've set up the ads in such a way that they generate us uh, people that are interested, people that are you know a right fit for us. And the great thing about that is that we also now turn down clients that we know are not a right fit because that whole scarcity mindset is gone. We know, okay, if this client, uh, if we turn on this client now and we turn down this retainer, it's not that we're saying no to money because tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow there's more calls booked. Maybe there's one client there that is a good fit. And when starting out, I really struggle with that mindset because I wanted to get whatever I could. You know, if a client is offering um, me a thousand a month to set up ads, I would take it regardless of if I could get them results or regardless of if that client was a right fit, regardless of how that client wants to communicate, regardless of how many times a week that client wants to hop on calls. I wanted the money. And nowadays, if a client doesn't fit 
everything that we say so it doesn't want to you know uh, only stick to our methods of communication it doesn't want to stick to our only methods of reporting it doesn't want to uh, or it doesn't fit within our niche then we just turn them away and like i said it's not like we're turning away money because the next day there's more calls getting booked and that is because we set up all of those ads so that is in my opinion again I know there are a lot of videos out there on how to scale agencies, etc. This is just my two cents, my opinion, what I've noticed from experience, mistakes I've made in the past. So hope you got some out of this. Leave a comment down below where you are currently at with your agency and where you desire to go to, okay? Speak life into your goals, guys. If you want to get up to 50K a month, speak life into it by, like I said, leaving a comment down below where you want to go to with your agency and where you're currently at. That is it for today's video. Like this video if you've got some out of it. Subscribe to the channel for more and I'll see you all in the next video.